Hello friends, how are we today? Oh, how's our volume? That sounds loud in my head. <laughs> Illy, you're here. Hello, Illy. If anyone doesn't know Illy Ree, she's an amazing artist and streamer. So give her a follow on Twitch if you haven't already. More painting today, Coffee Traveler. Yeah, I've got the first harpy back on the easel. Um, so it's whether we dive into her or whether we do a second base painting for a second harpy because I of course decided I want it to be a pair now, <laughs> not an individual painting. Um, so I've planned a second one. I've got it here ready to transfer, but I'd have to do the transfer first and the camera's not in the right position to watch me do the transfer. So maybe let's get stuff out to play with color on this one and then I can change tact if I want to. Volume seems good. Thank you, Senny. How are you, Senny? How's things? Oh. Still haven't figured out why some of my commands are only showing on Twitch and some are so showing on YouTube, but it's on the to-do list, I do apologize. So the Illy command works on Twitch, but not on YouTube. Mm, interesting, interesting, interesting. Yay! Hopefully this is good distraction for you, Ree. I know at the moment you're in the thick of it, moving studios, so yeah. Happy to be a distraction or a, or a background noise for you, if you need. Yay! Oh, wonky glasses, hello. There we go, yeah. It feels a little bit lonely in the studio today. Little Miss Dipper Fluff, my doggy, has officially... Oh, actually, I can put it on my ear today. I haven't got the maybe monitor. Okay, this is a bit different. Um, yeah, Dipper Fluff is over at the babysitter. She's over at our dear friend Kelly Unicorn's house, which I do believe I had a command for her too. Let's see if that works. Kelly the Unicorn! She's a majestic gamer and crafter. She hasn't been streaming just lately, but give her a follow for next time she comes back and does something cool. And then you can watch her do cool projects. Um, and she also plays games and things. She's very good at bomb diffusing. Um, but yeah, she's taking care of Dipper Fluff this weekend because we're going to be doing our first ever camping trip as a little family, um, just for one night. <laughs> so Dr. Batman has already gone off camping and now myself and the little one uh, getting all ready and packing our bags and getting the house ready and it's gonna be a whole thing. Is this Pumpkin now watching from the bedroom? Thank you Pumpkin. Thank you for watching. You're such a good YouTube watcher Pumpkin. Pumpkin the cat. You're beautiful. I'll just sit here and pay you compliments. That's what cats like, right? Beautiful. I want to say a huge thank you to all the amazing people who followed us since our last stream. We've already had, oh, a whole bunch more. Araset gave us a raid and a shout out. Pet Hippie Melemony, who's the best, coolest art streamer I've met recently. Like, she does really cool um, like abstract illustrations and floral illustrations in gouache and a bunch of other media. Um, I literally clicked on her stream because she was using Neo Color 2 crayons, which are so cool. Um, and I was like, ah, they're cool. And then we started chatting and they're super lovely. So hopefully they'll get to catch one of my streams at some point. That was a very late night that I found their stream at like 2 a.m. Australian time. So we talked a little bit about trying to figure out central time zones and that's really difficult. Thank you Neo Weather Station, Romera and a Blue Skittle also for following. So we have a huge group. There's 89 of you on Twitch now, which is huge. And we are this close to being a Twitch affiliate. We've just got to do today's stream and then one more stream and then we should be able to push the button. So that's very exciting. Um, yeah, all right, let's get ready to do some painting. Let's have a look at what I've got on the easel. Over here. Da -da, da -da. This is our nice daylight view. I love some daylight. Let's rotate your smidgey. There we go. And I wonder if we can make the camera go down just a little bit. Although, actually, no, I wanted you to be able to see my palette colors because if we're working in color, then I want you to be able to see where I'm dipping from. Yeah. All right, so I think a really nice place to start with this would just be immediately let's put a color in the background to give ourselves a bit of a color story to work towards. Our reference, the dead bird that I used for building the reference, is quite gray and neutral, so that gives us the power to sort of steer it in a cooler or a warm direction. Um, the model herself, she is quite warm, 
um, in general because she's up hanging upside down she's got a lot of blood flow to her face so that'll give us some really good tension in the piece so yeah I think this will be very very fun to get into hey Comma Waffle how you doing I've got a rain a sunny here it's lovely thank you everyone for watching and yeah the second harpy that I've got planned the hair sort of instead of going this way it goes the other way and the head's coming from the other direction so I think if you put them together they're gonna be really nice compliment you didn't see the bird body when you were on last time it's definitely grown so this is two sessions to get the whole thing underpainted I wanted to do it in one session but unfortunately that didn't work because I think that was the night baby needed help um, so I had to do a bit of a ghost and float away um, yeah, but we're all we're all on board now. We're all on board here today. So that's good. There's my reference picture, that's what I need. Hello. I'm also trying today my computer monitor next to me. I normally have horizontal like you normally would, but um mine's on an arm, so I've got it vertically today. So I'm gonna see if that setup allows me to keep the reference in the chat really close to camera view so you can see me a bit more directly <laughs> today so we're, we're doing a bit more this isn't a test stream but it's an experiment and anyway, we're always experimenting which is absolutely fine I've got to fix up my um does anyone here use what is it sticky zones or happy zones where you can create your own ways to set up windows that it remembers on windows I absolutely love this feature it was a downloadable feature but it's really fun and I've set it all up to go horizontally so I need to set up another profile where it goes vertically that's a point. the list of things to do grows and grows but that's okay because we're having fun and we're getting paintings done I have so many works in progress right now I'm so proud of myself I have one two three four five six seven eight works in progress at the moment which normally I have about three so I see that as huge progress because that means we're busy with lots and lots of things. So that's very exciting. But yeah, let's let's get some some things going. Oh, who's calling me? Thailand. No, thank you. Uh, I need liquids. <laughs> mm -hmm. I also want to thank Kelly the Unicorn for feeding me banana bread just before. So I have the energy to do things. down I can look oh my gosh it's a midday stream Arisa I know I'm hoping these are gonna be a little bit more common because I've got two days a week where little bird is in daycare and that means that I can get some daylight what is this daylight that we can see I've also got my studio light on without the studio light it looks a bit like that which actually that's a bit better a little bit less glowy let's do no studio light Ooh, very nice no sticker. Oh, I forgot the sticker. Oh no. Oh no, Arisette, you reminded me. <laughs> Godzilla, come over here. Where? I forgot. I forgot about modesty. <gasps> Bad Liz. Bad Liz. Bad Liz. We'll change the sticker in a minute. Godzilla's sort of going the wrong way. <laughs> well, maybe I can flip him. Can I flip him? How do I flip? Uh, transform? Yeah! Flippity! Whoop! You cover that. Oh, that's much better. Thank you, Godzilla. Perfect. <laughs> Modesty God. Modesty Lizard. Yes. <laughs> awesome. I caught a little bit of your stream yesterday, Arisa. How'd you go with your oil pastel portrait? I saw a little bit of that happening. I got to do a cheeky lurk because I had to do all these things to pack for camping this weekend. Oh, uh, brushes. Let's just grab a hunk and see what we get. I've got one drawer next to me of just on-the-go brushes, and then I've got my proper brush wallet, and then I've got all my main brush storage behind me. So this might be a bit of a hunt to find what I want, but we'll find what we need. As for background, I definitely use a combo of large and small brushes. Get everything on me. Oh, 
a big one. Oh, yeah, my big ones. No, I want to fill it. Yeah. It's nice to see you all here. Thank you for tuning in on Twitch and on YouTube. I was just saying earlier, we're getting this close to being a Twitch affiliate. I've just got to do one more stream after today's stream, and then hopefully, we're there. Procrastinating packing. <laughs> Oh, no worries. I, I, I was happy to drop in. I, I want to do a lot more. The portrait went okay, just more of a sit down and do something stream. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Oh, you're sick. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hope you get well soon. Being sick sucks. It is intense. I have to go find a big brush. Right there. Here over. Where is my bigger brushes? Uh, that's exactly what I want. Big fill it. Yeah. What are you painting, Ray? Are you still painting your your figure one that you were doing? What was she called? She had a name. You gave her a name. <sighs> what was it called? Siren? No. Something. Just gonna make sure there's no dust. By no dust, I mean of course there's dust. It's my studio. Ugh. It's the problem the second you let a pet in. Oh, you're doing a cat commission at the moment. That's not the one I was thinking of. I was thinking of the, the female figure one that you were doing. <laughs> George the Fabulous. <laughs> Forest Nymph, thank you. Nymph, that was the thing, not Siren. Blah, 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 blah. All right, what colors do we want? Come over here, colors. Got half my paints in a bag at the moment, and half of them, no, reference. Let's do a reference first. For Cloudscapes, I still like to have a reference up, even though I barely follow them, but it just gives me the vibe and keeps me on target <laughs> so they're helpful they're helpful I am very much not that I was saying you can't use a reference it's not original no use all the reference why not because realist painting where you want something to look like a thing is informed by real things so just because you know in your head vaguely what a cloud looks like having a picture of a cloud nearby helps at least for me uh, I want something like that, but upside down, so let's flip it. I want that. Boop, boop. That's better. So I'll show you what reference I've pulled up on the other one. So I've got my reference of the bird, which I won't show because that's got a new model in it. But this is my other reference. So I have an upside down cloud. Yeah. George the Fabulous Forest Niff. I mean, George can be a, a, a non binary gendered name so that totally works that totally works and I'm sure forest nymphs have no name conventions that are similar to humans so if they have name conventions it'll be their own I'm sure <laughs> all right that is the wrong reference in the other window can you pick the right reference please oh. The little arrow buttons on the photo viewer on Windows are sometimes so easy to push. Alright. Brushes. What do I need? Do I need paper towel? Yes, I do. Where is it? Mm. What colours do I want? That's the other question. What do I want? A lot of the time when I want to do oranges, I actually start with a transparent brown because I find transparent browns give you this really lovely sort of believable orange as opposed to orange straight from the tube is very very electric and very unnatural so weird things weird things that was actually raw sienna not burnt sienna but I'm happy with my choice George is a cute name for a female it's it's a cute name in general. I really like Charlie as a girl's name. I know a couple of girls that, well, I know one close person I'm close to named Charlie. I know a couple of fake Instagram people and stuff named Charlie. Oh, they've got soap in them now. Where's my paper towel? Ah. Hiding next to the friend. Mixing names to the genders was fun. 
picking names for my daughter was like a whole thing. I, I was really happy to find one of the baby apps had like a version of Tinder for names where you could like swipe right, swipe left if you liked the name. <laughs> so that was actually really fun because I could just sit in bed with my husband and go this, no, this, yes, this, no, this, yes, yes. The only person I will text while I live on stream is the dog babysitter because she's got my baby, so that's completely fair. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Puppy is good. It was really lovely taking Puppy over to Kelly the Unicorn's house because she got really comfy really fast. And that just made me feel so much better. And that's the thing, like when you're worried about how something's gonna go and then immediately you just get completely relaxation vibes <laughs> from either baby or dog. I'm just like, yes, the world is good. The world is great. Everything is good now. It takes all my worry away when I can just literally see her just go, hmm, I'm gonna have a sleep here. Good, yes, good. Okay, cool, chill. Hopefully she's still chill now that I've left, but I'm sure she's doing all right. Let's get some pink in there. Lily Ray was asking me about how I do my colors and I figured out a way to say I start with the brightest possible color and then I just gradually tone it down. And now that I've said it out loud a few more times, I notice it a lot more and I'm like, yeah, I do do that, don't I? I start with that, that real pink and then we'll, we'll gradually calm it down and it'll make sense later, I promise. But this is a really fun part of the painting because when you're doing just thin glazes like this, like I can just go over the feather and then suddenly it's a pink feather. Like look at that, that's a pink feather. Done. But um, yeah, it's, it's the joys of transparent oil paints. You need barely any paint and you can just tint and glaze things. And then you can just wipe it away if you don't like it. Hey look, grey feather again. <sighs> pink! I'm starting with pink. It's not going to end up pink, but I'm starting with pink because I want a nice bright base. Basically, at the moment, I'm going to kind of ignore the bird and I'm just going to paint the cloud form the way I want it. And then I'll scrub out what oil is on the bird while it's still wet. So then I can get into the bird a bit more. Bird. Harpy. I should say harpy. Pink is good vibes. I'm glad. Just because we're painting death doesn't mean we have to be grey about it. <laughs> Although grey is a perfectly valid expression of a mood. It's not the one I want for this painting. Igmo! Oh my gosh, how are you? How's things? Hello my love. I'm getting pink. Bird and Harpy is burpy. I'm not doing burpees on stream, dude. You don't want to see me sweating like that. <laughs> you don't want to see me sweating and being all gross. Oh, it's funny because that's what we say to the toddler when she does a burp. And it's like, oh, she's doing burpees. And I'm like, I don't mean that kind of burpee. There's none of those push up -y demon things in this house. I'm all for exercise, but that's a special kind of cardio torture. Ugh. Yeah. I want it to fade off into more blue over here, so we might get some blues going. And I just want it to be a little bit more atmospheric than my reference. My re reference is very, here's a cloud, here's no cloud, so I want to sort of meld it a little bit more. Inkmo, what are you up to today? Are you chilling? Are you working? What you doing? I have a, I have a thing! Hold on. This is how I'm always going to do commands, so I'm going to suddenly realize I have a command and just feel like, ha! Ah! Yes, send me a thing for the nipple. Godzilla's doing the job today. <laughs> You're chill? Yay. Sending you chill vibes. Oh, I did post on both. Okay, so see there, Inkmo got a shout out on both YouTube and Twitch, but they're written differently. So I feel like the... YouTube one I wrote back when I started streaming and the stream the other one is new and I don't know how to make them all be friends. Macros on your keyboard for short shout outs. Yes please. It's 
it's either that or like is there a better way to do it i don't know is there a way where i can just like have a list and i can just go boop i want that one i don't know because macros i'm not going to remember so yes you, you will need to give me a list okay that sounds good bring something okay is that that stream decky thingy that's expensive don't give me a stream decky thingy if you've got one you keep that for your thingy that's that's in my vague awareness as something that will be helpful later if if this is sustainable the way i'm hoping it will be at the moment it's sustainable because i'm basically doing painting that i'd be doing in here anyway but i get to spend the time with you guys which is great guys and gals and everything in between we yeah all right i need this one because i don't want to sit here with a little brush taking forever when i can just do a couple of big brush strokes you yeah, see now i feel like it's getting dark let's turn the light on there we go no, I don't want to have complex actions in anything. I want everything to be as simple as possible. <laughs> Basic number keypad will do the same thing after labeling. Okay, cool. Well, I've got, there is a number pad on my keyboard, um, which is helpful. But yes, labels, labels help. I like labels. Because my brain does not retain things well. It's hard enough just to remember what I've abbreviated each command to be and each time it's just if I was going to write the command again now what would I abbreviate it to and most of the time I guess that right. Um, so that's quite handy. So again I can just paint it straight into the hair and even though it's a little bit over I can just wipe it out and then it's completely fine. I love glazing. It's definitely a lot more satisfying doing this sort of method when you're starting on a mid-tone. The fact that this is like a mid-grey is great, as opposed to if you start on a white, then you just spend all your time trying to fill the colour, because transparent colour on white will appear really wishy-washy and thin, and all your brush strokes might be too much for you, I don't know. Depends on what brush you're using. Um, but... Can you see that bottom edge? Not quite. I might zoom out a little smidge. Oh, Godzilla! No! No, Godzilla! Click the right thing. There you are. You go over there. Thank you. Huzzah. <laughs> Yay. I also wanted to say a thank you to Chuck who gave me a... Uh, donate for a chai latte um i've actually turned i've got the little kofi just normal thing in the corner um if anyone wants to support me or has some coffee money kicking around that they want to chuck in towards an artist it is always appreciated but in no way required um simply because i've gotten into chai re lately and also every little bit helps when you are trying to survive as an artist so I've turned off the goals because our dear friend Quill, Jaquillen, um, provided a new puppy cam which has all the pixels and I can turn it on, it's just there's no puppy because the puppy's at the babysitter. Uh, and I'm going to keep calling it babysitter, not puppy sitter because Dip is a baby. She's three but she's a baby. But there's a chair in high definition. Yeah! Good chair! Turn it back up. Um, Blue and pink. Who's calling me now? Oh, be right back.
Sorry about that. Dr. Batman has made it to campsite. Camp is up. Tent is up. Phone reception is had. Happy, happy me knowing that they're all okay. Yay. So that's good. Good to know they're all doing their thing. And happily doing so. You keep thinking you might like camping? You should ask. You should ask Dr. Batman. He's all set up now. With our other friend whose online avatar I cannot remember in the moment. What's his name online? <gasps> What's his name online? Oh my gosh. I should remember this. No, this the place that they go does have a legit toilet. So that makes me happy. The screen's a bit more of an issue, especially if you're not with Telstra, you don't get reception. Um, but what is his name online? He has a name he uses all the time. Ah! Excal Falcon. That's the one. Excal Falcon has the big setup with Dr. Batman and they know all the thing. Hello! Kelly the Unicorn is here! You know a lot of sites here don't. Oh, I have bathrooms. Well, most of them will have a drop toilet somewhere. Um, but yeah, um, this particular one that we go to, it's only an hour out of Melbourne, which is great, even though it feels like it's worlds away. Dipper says hi. Hi, Dipper. My, my puppy cam is so lonely. Look, we've got a, a new beautiful puppy cam and it's a chair. Maybe I should put one of Robin's toys there. Or maybe um, um, like Evie or something. I could put Evie there. It's not the same. It's not the same. But yes, everyone, the dog babysitter is here. Kelly Sky is here. Um, awesome variety streamer who's very good at diffusing bombs with Neflin. So if you want to chuck her a follow next time she's diffusing bombs. She's being fed toast corners by Tim already. Oh, I knew it. You adorable muffins. That's okay. I gave you permission. I'll give Tim permission too. <laughs> Love you guys. Seriously, thank you. I feel so good knowing that she's nice and relaxed there. As much as, yeah, apparently I forgot to take the dog bed. So I'm a really good dog mum when it comes to packing. Um, <laughs> forgetting the absolute essentials. Because her dog bed, her normal dog bed, is on top of an ottoman. My brain just did not clock the fact that it was a movable object. I'm like, no, 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 the ottoman stays in the house and did not clock some other surface for her to sleep on. I'm a silly. Um, but she'll be right. But yeah, so I'll drop that around in a little bit. And then she'll be all set up and ready. That'll be fun coming over on Sunday for pickup with the toddler. She's gonna be all bouncy. I think I'm gonna bring the toddler, I'll double check. Depends on what Dr. Batman's doing. But I just got a call from Dr. Batman. They're all set up, they're all up there, ready to go. Phone reception is good. Well, it's good because they have one phone with them that is Telstra, and that is the only place, that's the only one that gets reception there. Um, but yeah, no, he said it looks like the Taj Mahal, so I'm like, cool. Sounds comfy for first time camping with a two year old. What is Godzilla doing on your stream? He's covering the bits. Because <laughs> I'm streaming on both YouTube and on Twitch. I just want to be careful because I don't want things to get flagged. And you know I like painting body bits that are not always in terms of surface happy. So I have a variety of stickers to cover the bits. Some of my other stickers include Dipper's face being happy. <laughs> oh, no, don't move that. Why does that keep moving? This is on top. It should not move. Dipper's face being happy. One of our stream friends, Harold, the bearded dragon. Harold. Here's Harold. And then we've also got Poppy, Lily the Pink's putty tat. Yeah. Oh, the babies. I have a space in my Discord, Cal, if you want to give me a picture to turn into a future nipple sticker. Oh, I just turned them all off. Bad idea. Bad idea. No, turn back on. <laughs> oh, Liz. Learn how to be a streamer. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll pop up a link to the Discord if you want to donate. You could do a little cute unicorn or something if you want. A Kelly unicorn. <laughs> um, Comma Waffle sent me the 
Godzilla, you know, Iggy. Yeah. Which actually, while we're doing alerts, there's Combo Waffles one. If anyone's not following Combo Waffle, because he's great. I remembered how to do commands. All the commands. While we're blocking some color into this. This doesn't even need much color, it just needs a bit, because I do want it to all be about the subject, so I don't want to go too hardcore with detail, I just want to sort of build out this cloud form at the top, but down here I just sort of really want a smear of blue, because I don't really want to make it bright and opaque. If I use a bright opaque white or something on here, it will be just as bright and shiny as the figure, and I want the figure to really really stand out, so I'm going to be really minimal. This is almost like I'm sort of like doing a stained glass tint, right, that's how transparent and thin I want to keep it. And again, it doesn't matter if it goes on the figure, I can just wipe it off the figure because oil paint stays wet for a while. But I just want to get it all into the nooks and crannies so I don't have that weird little like gap between the subject and the background. Hey, you! I did a you command. Haha. <laughs> Seriously, Cal, thank you for feeding me. Because otherwise I wouldn't have eaten anything. I do have a little Milo dude. Does anyone like these? They're like liquid Milo. Look, Mal, no worries, Lily. Good luck with the packing. You can do it. I believe in you. And I'll see you next week. Hopefully. Hopefully, depending on how you go. Hmm. It has much change to go through, but thank you. It's a fun, fun place to start. It was a good chunk of banana bread. It was good. Is coming from a mum who made a, a banana bread. I call it a cake, but it was just carved banana bread for a daughter's birthday. So, <laughs> banana bread. No, this is food. This counts. I'm good. Mm -mm. You don't know where I live. It's fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm not hungry. I just ate a thing. There we go done. I'm painting. Don't distract me. Don't make me go to the front door. Anyway, um, besides I've got legit ravioli in the fridge for dinner with the toddler so I'm actually prepared for once and vegetables for her. Not for me, but for her. You do cinnamon rolls for birthdays. That's fair. Well that's the thing is my like Dr. Batman really doesn't like fondant and like all the icing. So I was trying to think of alternatives, because if he doesn't eat it, then I'm eating 80% of it, and I don't want to eat all the cake. Granted, the banana bread, we, we spelled her whole name, so it's five letters, in thick, chunky banana bread, because it was the Costco banana bread loaves, and then I just carved it with a knife. It, it worked so well. It worked so much better than I thought it did. And then, yeah, after that, we just did a little bit of icing just on the top of each letter, so they were all brown, and then they had like a pastel rainbow color on the top and it just made it look gorgeous I was so happy with it and it got demolished everyone ate so much more than a sheet cake I feel I feel like if we had a normal cake it would not have gotten eaten as much but the fact that it was banana bread people went nuts for it which was great local place does huge cinnamon rolls <gasps> great thickness of banana bread's likely go well yeah yeah and that's how, if it's cold when you carve it it like wants to stay together better it doesn't want to crumble so the fact that it was like refrigerated um, at Costco was great because I just basically took the top off where it was like beveled and then I just put a stencil, like I drew out the letters to the size of the cake board that I wanted and then I just cut out each letter individually, stuck it on the top and then just carved around the letter. So I kind of traced it a bit. I would show you, but I'm putting in some effort to try and not put her name all over the internet. I'm failing. I'm trying to call her a little bird instead of her name, and it's not always working, but I'm trying. Um, and yeah, if I show you the cake because it's her name, that kind of defeats the purpose. It was very pretty though, just believe me, it was very pretty. I am not about baking, but I am all about decorating. Decorating is fun, it is just art with food. Baking is fraught with danger, and scares me, because I don't want to poison people. <laughs> I also want them to eat something that tastes nice. 
And that's the problem. Between not poisoning people and making it taste nice, that's a lot of effort and skill set that I do not have. So I'm just gonna sit here and buy something and decorate it. That works for me. Just trying to get some little variations in this colour, but I can always whip out the big brush if I want to diffuse it more. The little brush allows me to add more back and forth strokes and differences. Like down here there's still no colour in this bit, that's why it looks kind of gappy when I put my hand away. Baking is fraught with danger and is an awesome quote. Oh good! Baking is fraught with danger. Someone clip that. It has nothing to do with my stream, but it's fun. <laughs> you got Tim Giggles here? Yay! I like making Tim Giggle, that's fun. <laughs> oh. oh, I forgot to tell Tim about the uh, dipper turn rule. Dipper's running at you full pelt because she's going zoomies and she's having fun. Make sure to turn your body at the last second before she gets to you because guaranteed she's going to come up with two paws to jump on you and she's very good at getting guys right where it hurts. She doesn't do it on purpose but she does it with enough consistency that she comes with a warning label. <laughs> so um, just be mindful of that. It's all enthusiasm and she smiles at you while she's doing it because she's like yeah we're having fun and then I get to pounce on you and it's great and then you're in pain. <laughs> Duly noted. Good. <laughs> Less of a worry for us vulva people. <sighs> you know, if she hits you with a hard impact, it's still like 20 kilos going oof on you suddenly, but you know, other than that. Sorry, 19 and a half kilos. She lost a little bit of weight. 19 and a half. Yeah, coffee traveler. Yeah. <laughs> She's very enthusiastic. She's just comes at you with love and momentum at the same time. <laughs> it's weird how weird my house feels, her just not being here for like 10 minutes, honestly. My house feels strange and wrong. Because my body still wants to like check the door for movement and stuff, but I know she's not here and I'm just like, that's weird. It's weird. It is quiet. It's, it's too quiet. Having the headphones on helps. <laughs> but notice I've still got one ear off just because I normally have one ear off to hear the baby monitor or hear Dipper. And even though I'm here and I know no one's here, I'm just like, I'm too used to just to having one ear off. <laughs> also, my voice sounds funny if I put both ears on because of the noise cancelling, which I'm sure I could turn off, but do I know how? I don't know. So, I'm just gonna stick with you can all see this ear. I still don't have very much blue there. Okay, a little bit more. Problem is, because it's so thin paint, it gets tacky really quick. Because when you get paint straight from the tube and with medium, it's really slippy. But the second it starts to interact with oxygen and be smeared very thin, it goes kind of tacky sticky. So you've got to get these super, super thin blends sort of done quickly. Maybe I spent too much time fussing around. Back. I can use that to look back at the work. Yay. Right, I'm gonna leave the blue alone for now because I can always let this dry and then do another thin layer over the top so rather than it scraping back to the silver again it'll just add a bit more blue and I can add a different tone or different variation over the top if I want to later. So I'll do that. Let's get a bit more 
just here, just to complete the shape, because I've got sort of this dark shape twirling through. I didn't want it to be on half of her head and not the other half in some form, because that seems like it's coming out of her head then. I don't really want it coming out of her head. I want it to be behind her head. There we go. Cool. Alright, let's work on this bit up here. Now, I want a big chunk of dark here. And now we're going to mix in a little bit of opaques. See how that blue just went intense straight away? This is losing its opacity now. This is going to be much punchier. And I just want to dot some forms. Yeah, see on, on screen that looks intense. <laughs> so intense. And I want the main figure to be the most intense, so I'll have to calm this down a little bit, but that's okay. Just get the noodle around. So again, this isn't really anything like my reference, but having the reference there just makes me feel good and makes me feel secure in what I'm doing. It's like it helps me not get lost or something. Tacky Really Quick could be the title of the second volume of your memoirs. <laughs> second volume? <gasps> What's that? No. Thank you. Hey mod, can you get rid of that? Thank you. Are you in the mod screen or should I do it? I should have the mod screen up. That's what I should have. Why do I not have that? Do, 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 do. That one. And I go... Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. So when you delete that on that, it doesn't show up on my OBS thingy or on Restream. Okay, that's interesting. Can I edit that here? Settings? Filtering? Sure. No, it won't. Alright, just spam chat for a second and get rid of it. <laughs> Everyone just say boo like a ghost. Boo! I'll say boo. Boo, 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 boo. There you go, it's gone. Yay! Thank you all. Oh, I got a raw and a butts. Lots of grapes. <laughs> Okay, we need a, a slogan for saying spam the chat with something and get rid of it. <laughs> get it gone to the moon. To the moon! Do it. Go into the moon. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I haven't watched that in ages. Regular show. Go into the moon. Oh, I put out Real CNN before and I haven't played with it yet. Let's play with that. Yes. No, we don't want it to go green. Come back here. Let's start with some of that. Yeah, that's what I want. Beautiful. This is like a transparent gold oxide. Just allowing me to feather into the blue and the magenta. And add some warmth. To the moon! Yes! <laughs> Go into the oh, I really hope that doesn't get stuck in my head for the rest of today. If it does, I blame you, coffee traveller. You said it first, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Come on, Waffle, you've got to tell me when you're free for us to try this restreamy thing. I asked Ree, but Ree's moving, so she gets a pass. <laughs> You're welcome, great. Uh, oh, I keep finding my own hair on me. This is why I shouldn't brush my hair. It goes everywhere. Is it, no? Okay. not super loving that yellow the way I thought I was loving it. So let's just scrape that off. Come off, are you seeing four shows? Are you seeing Grand Hunter Go? Did you get tickets? 
Groundhog Day, the Tim Minchin musical that I saw, three in rehearsal. It kind of counts. You see what's happening around you. What are you seeing? Shout out the shows. Or are they weird shows? You do have weird tastes sometimes. That's why it's fun. Impromptu tunes tonight. Groundhog Day and an amateur production of Cruel Intentions tomorrow. Is that a musical or is that just like Cruel Intentions as a stage play? Then rehearsal on Sunday. Cool. From 9 to 5. What's impromptu tunes? It sounds punny. And like, improv-y? Is it improv -y? Cruel Intentions is a musical. <gasps> but does it have Ryan Philippe's butt? Jukebox musical. What's a jukebox musical? A musical with songs that already exist. That's my logical jump there. Yes. Hey. Figured it out. I don't always love jukebox musicals though, because like I didn't like like Mamma Mia and stuff. Because, well, I don't know. I'm not a big ABBA fan, so that's probably why I didn't like Mamma Mia. But <laughs> so and Juliet would be another example of Mamma Mia. Yeah. 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 I'd like that one. Okay. I'll trust you more on that, just that I'd like it for the sake of liking it. I got tickets to something the other night. I asked husband on a date, so he's gonna go on a date with me, and we're gonna be like we're 22 again, and we're going to a metal gig. Because his high school friend is in a cool band. So we're going to go see a band and we're going to go to a club and we're going to mosh. And it's going to feel really weird being there as 35 year olds. <laughs> Ooh. Impromptu Tunes is an improvised musical. They take a title from the audience and they run with it. <gasps> and you know some of the performers. Oh, are you going to be that? Are you going to be you in the audience and give them really hard things to do? Comma waffle. You consider joining the group on and off for a bit. I could see you doing that. I think you would have a lot of fun with that. You're good at improv. You and Triangle. I would like seeing you both in something like that. That would be very fun. For very different reasons. <laughs> mm. Yes, yes. It's just a title they do the rest. Well, that's the... Yeah, you have no idea what's going to happen in the night. So that makes sense. That's the improv for you. That being said, though, are you going to give them really difficult, horrible things if you are the person they talk to? I saw an improv Harry Potter thing once at the comedy festival. That was kind of fun. When you have a structure like that, where you have sort of like an ongoing narrative you can cling to, it made the improv very easy because they had sort of something to hold on to the whole time. It wasn't like everything was fluid. Lots of source material to pull from. And it was back when JK was less problematic. So more fun. You've already seen them once this run, which was Charcoal Chicken. <laughs> nice! That's very Australian! <laughs> The prior show, last comedy festival you saw them do was I Love My Razor Scooter. Oh, retro. That's a callback. We got one because I won one on a spinning wheel. Did I win it? Or one of my sisters? Can't remember. One of us won it on the spinning wheel and then we injured ourselves on it a bunch and then gave up on it entirely. I am not a coordinated bean. I was never going to be good at it even though I really, really wanted to be. This is where cloudscapes just get really fun. Just just making lumps into lumps into lumps. I just want to sort of have it chill on the background and then sort of get more exciting as you get to the middle. So it's like the whole board is sort of going this way. Yeah. I 
just wondering how bright to go in the background. I don't want to go too bright. At the same time, I want to not just be like, this is one object on a pink and blue background. It needs to sort of integrate a little bit. Godzilla's first date. <laughs> All right, I, w I will say that that is officially not too cruel and that is permitted because it's not too obscure and hard and difficult as I'm sure your brain would sometimes want it to be. Would that be like a- oh, see immediately my brain is like, would that be like Godzilla with like 13 year old pubescent croaky voice? I don't know. I'm not good at performing it like improv, but I definitely enjoy thinking about it. Like just doing that, give me a prompt and then I can immediately think things. I think that's why I like doing Oil Toba so much. Does everyone in here remember when I did Oil Toba? Instead of Inktober in October, I did a um, oil painting a day challenge. Or rather, do 31 oil tobers in a month challenge, because I didn't manage to do it every day, but I, I caught up all the time. I've got a whole bunch of um, videos on my YouTube channel about them, including a playlist, I believe, that has all of them in it. And I've done it for multiple years, I think. On YouTube, I did it for three years, but in general, I did it for five because I just did it on Instagram and stuff at the start. At first, it was just like I tried to do Inktober and then I got less into that. And then I tried to do a year where I just did a black and white figure every day. And then Oiltober was more, um, I asked my Instagram followers and YouTube followers to give me prompts and then I drew them out of a hat or out of a bowl and that was a lot more fun because it was directly engaged with the ideas of people who watch my work so I got some amazing prompts out of it and some really cool paintings that I loved still love um, well, a lot of them have sold yeah I can do people's pets I, I just I enjoy pet portraits minimally in that I'll do one and I'll enjoy it and then I'm bored by the second one so <laughs> I do them every now and then in little bursts and then I won't do them for a long time because I just get bored easily unfortunately like doing that little sketchbook of Harold the bearded dragon the other day I'm like yeah I'm good with lizards now I'm done <laughs> so yeah it's one of those things unfortunately where it just doesn't give me the dopamine as much as other things do. Um, I love people who dedicate themselves to pet portraits. They just get so good at getting the personality of the animal across. And I really, really respect so many artists who do it, who are great. I know here on Twitch, they've got Freakmeister, who's great. Oh, what just happened? Bud in the yard! Hey, Bud! How you doing? Welcome, welcome to the, to the studio. We're painting a dead harpy today. Um, I was just talking about pet portrait artists and yeah Freakmeister is a big one on Twitch I say big he has you know more than tiny baby followers like me uh, but I don't know what the scale of artists is on Twitch because I follow some but not enough I am on the hunt at the moment to find more traditional artists there is a section on my discord where you can pop recommendations for me to have a look at um, of other streamers to link to but I'm trying to link to as many traditional artists as I can because they get a bit drowned out by the just the sheer quantity of digital art that is on the platform. You had no idea you weren't following. Oh, that's okay. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate the follow, Bard. I think you were number 90 then. Did you, did you get a big fancy number of 90? We, we're like way over what we need for affiliate, but I need to still do one more stream. And then at the end of the next stream after this stream, on another day, I think then I can apply for affiliate. So we're so close! Yeah! So close, so close, so close. Sorry, I keep bouncing out of camera. Maybe I need to move camera a little bit. There we go. That might be better. Yeah! Ghost away. Ghosty, ghosty, ghost, if you want to. Oh, this is that weird Moni song. Let's delete this one because this one weirds me out. It's called Trees. Why is it called Trees? And it's creepy sounding. There you are. Delete. Oh wait. Unheart. Is that what I have to do? Do that. Cool. Yeah, so close, which is absolutely astounding and wonderful. So I'm very, very thankful of everyone who's given us a follow over here on Twitch. 
um, as well as everyone on YouTube who's been watching for the watch hours. We're, we're back on the road to trying to get monetized over on YouTube, um, which is a much longer road, so absolutely appreciate anyone who can watch over on YouTube. But we've officially cracked 1,000 watch hours again, which is great. And then we need 4,000 to get fully monetized on YouTube. So long-term goal, long-term goal. Um, but very, very, very thankful for everyone who's been watching my videos and watching my streams over there because every little bit helps. Every little bit. I've been actually playing my videos quite a lot at work, on the computer at work, so. <laughs> doing little things like that just to just to try and get it going but it, it makes sense because they're art videos and it's an art shop so it totally counts um, as a legit viewing source you're missing the subs for YouTube monetization have you got the watch hours the watch hours is the hard one how far off are you on subs for me it was the fact that we got to almost 3,000 watch hours and then I got pregnant and had a baby so then I dropped off the planet for a little bit and now I'm back. <laughs> oh, thank you, Bard. Any any help? I, I'm so appreciative. That would be amazing. Um, I've got playlists. That's the easiest way to just stick a playlist on in the background and like keep going. You have 180 subs. How many subs do you need? A thousand, I think. You have all the watch hours and views. That's so good, Coffee Traveler. Oh my gosh. Um, best recommend for um, that is if you set if you search for videos of things that are similar enough to your videos without being copying you know like community video similar themes um, and search for videos that have been uploaded in the last six hours I love to interact with videos that have gone up similar time to me because that means those people are online and often quite interested in seeing more content like what they make um, so yeah that was a cool way it's not going and asking people follow for follow because that's not cool that's tacky it's um yeah genuinely talking to people who are interested in stuff that you're interested in when you know they're online <laughs> or at least adjacent to online because they've recently uploaded um, so I've really enjoyed that and then what else was I doing to meet YouTube people I actually joined a couple of Facebook groups of like YouTube artists specifically that was really good what sort of stuff do you do on your channel I'm just searching coffee traveler but tell me if it's something else <laughs> how to build a coffee traveler I doubt it's that <laughs> Do you want to stick your YouTube channel in the Discord um, under the send Lizza thing thing? What have I called it? I've called it something. What did I call it? Where's my Discord? Ooh. Games. We like to take hard games and make it easier. Oh, that sounds fun. That's cute. I am very much a fan of easy games. I like games that are doable because they are more fun. Oh, thank you, Ink Mario, for sending me your sticker. I will integrate that later. Yay! I have an Ink Mario dumpling head to add to the sticker collection. And then there is a bot thingy. I will figure out the bot thingy. But yes, no, that would be great. And actually, yes, can we have a, a talk stream date at another time? Yes, please. Because you are a wealth of amazing information that I need to buy a coffee for. Yes, we all love Inkmo. Inkmo is the best. Let's do another little Inkmo thingy. But I'll have to set up a prompt for you as well. Everyone, Bard in the Yard is an amazing streamer too on Twitch. So click their profile and go through to Bard in the Yard. What have you been doing lately, Bard, on your stream? I've seen you been on. What have you been doing? Yeah. All right, let me add that to my list. Do a command for Bard. Where's my list? There's my list. And then, in If I don't write things down, you've been doing Magic the Gathering, Baldur's Gate, and just started Fallout 4. Oh, cool! Is that because the TV show's out now? Everyone's been saying really good things, so that makes me happy. You put links into chat. Thank you! Oh, it doesn't matter too much if it's in the wrong spot. Like, my Discord is what it is. Send me the thing, that's fine. Or recommended streams, also fine. Both places are valid. Or oh, where'd you put it? Links to share, still good. Yeah, awesome, thank you. 
Oh, we'll check that out later. This is the best. I love the hour after I stream. I just get to go through and check cool things. <gasps> you did Cult of the Lamb. That is a game that is too hard. That's really cool. Oh. Definitely just be telling all you Twitch people to go follow you on YouTube. Because I guarantee you, every single one has a YouTube account. <laughs> and maybe a few titles in your thumbnails could help. Because if I look at just your, th your thumbnails... Thumbnails on YouTube are huge. They're so important. Um, if you go have a look at my channel, you can see I put a lot of work into my thumbnails. You want people to not have to read the title. You want people to look at the thumbnail and click because they know what they're getting. Um, be it if you add a name to the style of video, like the let's make it easy or something like something like that. And then even the kitty baby snuggle time, if you put just like the word kitty on it or snuggle, like that would be enough to get people so I would I definitely think thumbnails would help you there's a lot of really good online guides to doing thumbnails and even that like canva free image editor online is fantastic so that would really really help you um, just with making thumbnails that are really easy to grab like that little one that says learning is fun looks really cute but I have no idea what that video is about it just says learning is fun with a potato and it looks cute um, which is rad. That's all right. Always tell me if you're not looking for critique and advice stuff as well, by the way, because I will just blur whatever's in my head um, when I see stuff. The one that says Front Seat Friday, that looks great. You've got a gaming chair, so I'm immediately like, cool, there's a chair, we're doing gaming, and it says Front Seat Friday, so I'm like, okay, this is a thing you do regularly, and yeah, that that is is quite more grabbing although the title is below the timestamp so if you move the title up a little bit so the timestamp doesn't go over the word that's a good idea your channel is always about getting better oh cool yay well that's the thing with art critique and that I'm, I always want people to be very forward with me if they're not looking for critique or if they are looking for critique because I'm very much the I will only say the positives I see in things unless you specifically ask for constructive tips tricks whatever but at the same time I know I've like learned a lot in my career of being artist so if you want to dip into that well I'm, I'm very happy to share um, <laughs> very little filter yes no a lot of us have very little filter that's why we need mods <laughs> like come on fall in Senny and I think Inkmo is a model as well just to make sure it's all above board and as long as everyone's being nice to each other I'm happy. Okay, I like that one little bit. Let's make the whole rest of it look like that one little bit. A bit. A bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. And see, now the little tackiness in the paint is quite good because it means I can sort of grab and pull highlights by shifting the darks around. I'm literally like moving the paint around. Yeah, the thin, thin paint goes a long way. I've, I've picked up barely anything over here. But it just, it motors. And it's, yeah, a lot of, um, some painting teachers are very against manipulating the paint once it's down. They're all about it. So how you put down the mark first and then it stays there the whole way through. I, I'm very okay to manipulate things when they're down because placing paint is only one way to make a mark. There's so many different ways you can make marks and having the slick surface of the aluminium gives me more options to manipulate, which is quite handy. Um, you are the filter. Yes, call me Waffle. You're like a coffee filter. You make sure it's all good. But yeah, that's kind of annoying that when you flag something, I can't see that on my end, on the OBS end. Because I'm reading the chat through OBS at the moment. Should I be reading it through somewhere else? I don't know. Well, I can add things to the block list in Restream. Maybe that's helpful. Don't know. You definitely want to bring me a proper lighting kit for evening streams. <laughs> the natural light does look so much better, but that's painting in general. Like, painting in general, natural light always looks better. Um, but yeah, the lack of glare makes me so happy because as you know in those sketchbook streams the glare just 
gets on my nerves after a while. I was wondering if I should pull out my tabletop easel and work on an angle when I do sketchbooks rather than working flat. I think that might help a lot. So what I might do next time, um, yeah, that might be good. Yeah, that might be good, Common Waffle, if you delete the chat first and then ban the person or the bot. That might be great because I'm pretty sure that was just a bot. Um, the way that they have interacted. But this is good. We're learning. Crazy for me is just painting bad posture in general. <laughs> but at least on the angle, I can do similar to this where I have the camera slightly off flat. And being slightly off flat, you always have way less glare. It does mean you guys don't get a, a front on exact view, but that's really hard to do. I've actually filmed things before where I've had the camera right here in front of my face while I've been painting and sort of been dodging the camera to paint. And that's just, at that point you question, are you making a video or are you doing a painting? <laughs> like do the painting. The filming for me is always a secondary thing because the painting is the thing that I want to accomplish the most. It was interesting, I saw a YouTuber, Slu, who's one of the really big ones, um, post a video that was basically, I like painting, I really do, but for me the video is more important, the video is what I'm interested in. And that's why he's not really interested in selling his originals and things like that, because for him making the video is the product, and that's the thing he's more interested in. And I'm like, that's cool that he can own up to that as a big artist on YouTube and go, look, the actual thing I'm making in the video is not the thing that I'm the most interested in. It's, it's an awesome thing that I love doing and I'm not going to stop doing it, but actually it's the video making that gives me the passion. Yeah, so being able to identify that and publicize that I think is really refreshing. Because that means he's being completely authentic with everyone. Love that. Those bots have been putting back in the last three days. Huh? Sorry, I missed that. That's all right. The process is more important than monetizing instead. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what, for me, it's very much like the whole reason I like streaming is one, I get a lot of adrenaline and energy and focus from talking to people while I work. Um, in general, if someone can come hang out in the studio with me while I'm painting and we can just chat, I stay focused on what I'm doing really well and I'm less likely to get distracted and I love that streaming gives me similar vibes to that. Um, and then secondarily, it's the idea of being able to have a tiny little passive income of some kind when I'm doing the painting anyway. Um, because yeah, setting up any kind of passive income that I can have going at the same time as doing what I do, kind of similar to I use Imprint as my print shop. If anyone ever wants one of my pieces as a print, they make absolutely beautiful prints. But the fact that it's a third party company that does the actual printing and it doesn't require more labor from me beyond making the beautiful file to start with. Um, okay, not a passive income, but another stream of income um, to use the word stream while streaming. <laughs> um, but one that I don't have to directly handle every individual minutia of. The more of those sort of access points I can build into my practice, the more I can focus on the part that I'm the most passionate about, which for me is the paintings, the content and the process of painting. That's the part I want to be here doing every day as much as I can. I had like a little flash daydream the other day of like when my daughter's in school school and I'd be able to do this, you know, four or five days a week, which is crazy. Hey Sammy! This isn't a witch, it's a harpy. <laughs> We're talking mythology. Not, you know, witchcraft. I'm being a noggin, it's alright. But thank you. <laughs> I'm glad that even though I haven't been streaming for like two years, coming back feels so good and natural. I was really hoping it wouldn't be like a, I'd try again and the magic would be gone and it'd be really sad. 
it definitely feels just as good to hang out with everyone and talk art and do as it did before and that's kind of magical and wonderful on its own I feel really lucky about that and I think that is completely outside of whatever setup I've got and things like that it's more the the doing it's in the doing of the thing <laughs> I get to be a witch yay my lifelong dream I will be a witch yes please I don't go have green hair and wear black for no reason. No, actually, that's more comfort reason. I actually have a feeling my wearing black and green hair thing is more of a... Um, I get sensory overwhelm from trying to put together outfits with lots of colours or patterns. So just wearing black is a lot easier on my poor little brain. So <laughs> I found a comfort zone and I decided that was something I did not need to put spoons into every day. Because, yeah, now when I do plan an outfit that's coloured or patterned like I wore a jade dress to a wedding the other day which has like flowers and stuff on it it takes so much more mental energy just to put the outfit together and put it physically on make sure it's sitting properly and all that it takes so much energy and I'm just like Bleh. and for some people that gives them energy putting together cool crazy outfits and stuff like that or like just taking pride in putting things together and for me it's like nah no oh, man, I like I like shapes, and I think that's why I like black in particular because you can have lots of different silhouettes and shapes within black that work perfectly cohesively together no matter what. Um, and it's also very available in all the sizes because I keep bouncing between plus size and large normal size. Um, black is very available, so that's helpful because then I can find the things that I want. You have really leaned into colours and patterns in your elder years, and in a very different way than you did when you were younger. Because when you were younger, you did try colours quite a lot, but it was in a very pop culture, very cor skinny corridor of options. And I feel like now you have broadened yourself to a world of options, and it really suits you. I'm awful. Like, your wedding outfit is a true testament to how much it suits you, and... We're talking about being authentic. It feels really authentic on you, which is great. Like, even my older sister, um, Lily the Pink, the way that she puts herself together and that sort of thing, as much as it does feel like a new Pokemon evolution, it also feels really authentically her. It's kind of chaos but fun, which is her as a person. <laughs> so, chaos but fun totally works. I like that little bit. See how it goes dark and then it gets lighter again as it comes out? I like that. More of that. Black tea with pop graphic. Yeah, and jeans. Like, you wore jeans a lot. Which, granted, so did I. Like, there's a whole f section of my life that was flare jeans exclusively, and I feel like I'm in currently my cargo pants era. <laughs> jewel tones suit you. Yeah. I like jewel tones as well. That's why the dark green, dark purple, dark blue, dark red. Less so dark red, because I get the red face thing. I do also like these. This is a little pinafore that I'm committing to being like a painting pinafore, because it's basically an apron that doesn't hurt my neck. Because if the apron just goes around my neck, like it did in my first retail job, not my first retail job, one of my retail jobs I was in for ages, we had to wear an apron. And after a while it would hurt my neck, because it just hangs from the one point all day. But because this is distributed on my back, being a pinafore, so much comfier and practical. Thank you! Cal, this is the first one I found that I actually like like. Like a lot of them have funny shapes or like funny amounts of scoop, but this one is just very casual and chill. And yeah, it feels like I'm wearing an apron. So I can just do practical things in it, which is helpful. Um, I'm really bad at actually wearing aprons because I forget to put them on. Aside from the fact that they hurt my neck after a while. So. This is working for me at the moment. I definitely still am a huge fan of my current cargo pants fascination. I think I've got three pairs now of the same cargo pants in two sizes. Um, and they are just fabulous as a mum because the amount of things your toddler needs at all times and carrying bags all the time is annoying, but I can carry a drink bottle and a stuffed bunny and a snack and my wallet and my phone and more with my cargo pants all at once and not have to carry a bag and it's great oh i can carry her hat in a pocket all the things who's booping on my discord did you guys hear the boop 
Boopity boop. Don't you be booping. I'm going to mute you. Good. Hopefully that is happy now. Yeah. Start moving. Alright, cool. I think that makes sense. You have issues with pinafores overalls too? As in finding them to fit you, right? Because you're so gorgeous. You should make one! Little miss, I can make cool things that actually fit and work and function as clothes. Or maybe you should commission Rose's reliquary to make it. Reliquary? No, it's a different word. Repository! Rose's repository to make one for you. Fit and style. It's on the list. Yay! And you have a pattern. Yay! Okay, well we want updates when that happens, please. You'll have to update stream and tell them how custom pinafores are going. Yeah. Where did I get reliquary from? Repository. Reliquary is like very Anastasia, the animated movie. There. Alright, I need more. And I need some more media. Let's just reload for a minute. Reload. If anyone's curious, I'm using Liquid Fine Detail, which is very. Oh, there you go. Liquid Fine Detail. It is a fast dry medium that is thinner. Reliquary, very Hellboy. Yeah. Hellboy is so underrated. It's always so good, the movies. I really like them. Doug Jones. Yes. Magical Fishman. I definitely think of Bartok from Anastasia being all like, you don't need this reliquary or something. What does he say about it? Oh, that's like half an earworm where you don't get the whole thing. When he's talking about Rasputin falling apart. That bit. I can't do a good Bartok voice. I really want to, but I'm self-conscious now. I did hear it in his voice. <laughs> you are correct. But that's why I'm sad I can't make the voice come out. I want to. Oh, that's fun. Alright, let's do a nice big blue divide up here. Get, it's a bit too samey up here, so I'm going to get a bit more vicious. Now that we've got a nice fresh medium. And the brush is all wet. Let's get some forms in here and then that'll give us a little roadmap for where we're going. Reliquary. I just keep hearing the reliquary now. Oh my god, this is gonna drive me nuts. How much audio from a film am I allowed to play on stream before I get flagged? That's <laughs> oh, alright. It's fun. It's fine. I want a nice big cheek of blue over here. Okay. That could be a good That could be a good Depend on the film. Specifically, Anastasia, that animated one. To know what the line is about reliquary specifically. You follow a streamer that just streams old movies, they'd probably be out of copyright, wouldn't they? I think it's sometimes it's interesting because sometimes if you play, I think you're allowed to play copyrighted stuff on stream, but if you save it as a VOD, it automatically mutes if it flags. So the VOD would be muted, and then on YouTube I would get a copyright strike for the YouTube video of it. I don't know, they're in copyright, yeah. Yeah, because I know like a lot of streamers that I watch, like Jordan Rasko, um, she watches old episodes of Australian Gladiator, for example, and they're definitely not 70 plus years old, which is one of the public domain age things. Um, 
I'm a little sad. I haven't seen any good artwork come out of the Steamboat Mickey being public domain now. And I'm like, wasn't the whole thing that like everyone was going to suddenly make Steamboat Willie artwork? Maybe I'm just not seeing it because I haven't searched for it enough. But yeah, with more and more of the Disney stuff going public domain. Although they've made it complicated with all the remakes and that. And um, the Steamboat Willie standing at the stern now being trademarked because it's their logo for Walt Disney Animation Studios. That was a smooth move, trademarking that, so it's separate to copyright. Smooth move, Disney. Smooth move, Trixie. Oh, this is looking much more fun and chaotic now. Good. Ah, oh, you also have to be big enough for Twitch to care. That makes sense. Yeah. That's what was interesting. Um, the other night, someone sent me a video about um, Twitch changed their rules three months ago to allow artistic nudity and then Onimus immediately had to turn it off because everyone just started watching everything under the sun to test the limits of it and like so many people got banned. Everyone got banned but the bans haven't been reinstated even though they've changed the rules back. Like they haven't reinstated the accounts which is a bit rude. Where was it? It was on my Discord. Who linked it? It was links to share? No, it was send me the thing. Send me the thing. Autosaur posted it. Yeah, so there's a Rubber Ross video about my response to Twitch of just reacting to how that all went down three months ago. I completely missed that, but whoa, it's a whole thing. Your life does pretty well, Gumball Waffle. And do you really want to work for Disney? That feels like you just want to be a dick all the time. I feel like working for Disney would be a bit, like, it's not actually magical because now you're on the inside and you've got to do all the conniving stuff. You know? I did watch a cool video on YouTube about people who have died in Disneyland and how they legally haven't died in Disneyland because they don't announce that they're dead or pronounce that they're dead until they're outside of Disney. <laughs> So, if you die at Disneyland, you don't actually die at Disneyland. <laughs> like, if you have a heart attack or something like that. Um, you've got plenty of friends that are cast members. Do they enjoy it? I suppose it would be a bit like that. If you're in the right role and things like that, it'd be fun. But I still feel like it'd be very pressured. There are some great Disney Urban Legends. Um, one of my favorite YouTubers, Ask a Mortician, which is Caitlin Doty. She did a couple of videos specifically on death myths and stories around Disneyland, and they were all great. So, Kel, you'd really like those if you want to look those up. Um, they were great. That legend is false. Aww. About the not dying on site. What about the one where apparently the Haunted Mansion has a lot of difficulty because people keep trying to scatter ashes in there on the sly? And they're trying to dissuade people from doing it as much as possible. Oh, that's sad. Well, it's not really sad, but it's... it's. I liked it as an urban legend. I like weird urban legends, but if they're not true, then they're just false facts. And that's less fun. They've lost the air of mystery. That's 100% true across the whole park. Oh, about people sneaking in with ashes all the time. Yeah. And it makes sense, because like so many people would say, I want my ashes at Disney. I'm surprised they don't sell mausoleum space, honestly, because they would make so much money if they had like a little area that was like off the Alice in Wonderland hedge maze that was a mausoleum. They'd make so much money, and Disney loves making money. Or even if they opened their own, like, cemetery park somewhere that was just decorated with Disney stuff. Like, that would make so much money. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so all the cast members enjoy their jobs. That's good. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Because that's a demanding job, so you want to make sure they have job satisfaction. I suppose as a performer, that is quite a high up there thing. Not just because Disney magic, but because of, like 
a real performance base. Yeah, the fun never stops, even when you're dead. Yeah, honestly. When you've got like, um, what is it, the Hollywood Forever Cemetery Park and things like that that are like so Disneyfied anyway. Who is that? Who is that? Someone twinkled. Someone made a twinkly noise. I'm in the wrong screens. Ah! Ah! Vivi Adams! Thank you for following. Hello. How are you? Sorry I was in the wrong screen. I missed your name by this much. We're talking about um, Disney and death a little bit while painting a harpy. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, see, you'd be so down for a Disney mausoleum. It would be such a thing. And I know they like, well, part of the reason the urban legend of, of people not dying on site was the whole idea that the Disney corporate didn't want to be associated with death. But I'm like, dude, you could literally have like graves to all the characters that have died in Disney movies. Like there's so much you could do there. And all you need is the, you know, acceptance of the inevitable. And you're capitalists. If you can make money off of it, you can accept anything. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> oh, thank you for following on YouTube. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, I'm now streaming across the two. So I'm using Restream so I can stream on YouTube and on Twitch. So that way accessible for whatever your preference. Um, I definitely appreciate any views on YouTube because getting the YouTube watch hours to get monetized is really hard and we're trying to hit that as a goal so we're at about 1,000 watch hours at the moment we need to be at 4,000 so we've got a ways to go unfortunately um, but we'll get there we'll get there I mean no particular rush other than that I really want it to happen so yeah See, now I feel like because I've been working with the little brush for so long, all my lumps are getting very similar size. So I'm just going to quickly go back in with the big brush and see if I can add some big variation shapes again. So that's my problem. If I work in a similar way for too long, it all gets a bit samey. See, that's already added a sort of section of a different mark. And this is a very soft brush, so it sort of blends away a lot of the brush marks just to add another look, which I really like. Yeah, that's nice. Let's do a bit of that over here. Also, this is called a filbert, the like curve brush. Anytime you don't want sort of sharp edge brush marks to show, grab a filbert. It's really good for big, soft, blendy things. That's why they use this shape in makeup brushes so much, because you don't want edges. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you, Vivi. That's so cool that you noticed the, ch the chat had both. Yeah, I'm really happy that the restream shows sort of both logos. Um, as much as I'm using a League of Legends overlay to have the little <laughs> chat screens look like that. I'm like, eh, it's aesthetically matching enough. It's fine. We're still figuring out this streaming stuff over here, but we're having a lot of fun painting in the meantime, <laughs> at the same time. The thing about your earlier thing with stream Steamboat Willie, you haven't seen any good art come out of it. It was like the Winnie the Pooh horror movie. Yeah. The Winnie the Pooh horror movie was definitely down to the novelty factor, but that's why I expected more people playing with the novelty factor um, of something coming onto public domain. There was a handheld film in Disney World, Escape from Tomorrow. They secretly filmed in Disney Parks and the film ended up being incomprehensible. Oh, not quite Blair Witch then. They were hoping for a Blair Witch. That can happen sometimes. But it's very hard to get the double of really good marketing and hype and really good content. That's the, the, the hardest thing to hit is the both. And to hit both, you either need a really amazing writing, directing, acting crew, or you need heckin' funding. <laughs> so. All is possible, though. Bad from first principles? Then, yeah. Cool idea, bro. Someone else pull it off better, please. 
There are some things like that where it's just like, that's a really cool concept, can someone go workshop that for five years and then bring it back, please? And it's just the question of if the second go would have the same hype when it's less the first time original idea. I think I want this brighter yellow bit to sort of curl around the foot a bit. So I'm just going to bring it down a little bit and then we'll figure out how to integrate it with the foot and then get a bit more of it happening. Assume that Willie is also really narrow to play with. Yes. Yes, and that is why Disney has trademarked sections of it, and that's what the most iconic part is him standing at the steering wheel whistling, and that's the part that they've trademarked as the Walt Disney Animated Studios animated logo um, at the start of Walt Disney Animated Features, because that's the part most people would want to play with. But, like, people can play with Pete, they can play with the other characters, they can play with other scenes. Like, Steamboat Willie is not a two second cartoon, like, it's a whole. It's a whole cartoon. Um, I think it's worth it for the novelty factor. I don't know. Artists in general love working with things just for the novelty factor, and that's why appropriation art is still a huge thing, where it's like, I'm using your IP, but if I'm perverting it to a different purpose, it counts as appropriation, which is okay. Not copyright abuse. Um, it is a very fine line, and a lot of people try and tread it, but a lot of people do it. Most art fairs I've been to have some sort of Disney character somewhere in some sort of punk, perverted way represented. Like all the um, artists who do Disney princesses covered in tattoos now and things like that. That all is on that dubious line of it. Is it copyright infringement or is it appropriation? Appropriation was a really good topic at uni. That was a fun one because it was so debatable. And like, accessible debate, I guess? Because you're talking about intent and use and also, like, is the audience misled? So, yeah, interesting. I like those sort of subjects at, at uni that were sort of bringing up things that I didn't know were big topics. They were. Okay, I like this now. So we've got sort of two bands of more intense cloud and then the rest is really subtle. So if I want to keep building on those two bands, that go slightly differently to the, fig the main figure. I think that'll be really interesting, but then it's got enough diffusion that it's not gonna overwhelm the harpy. So that makes me happy. This has been a very productive hour 45, can I just say, thank you. This is what I mean, hanging out with you guys. I paint way better when I talk to people. It's really annoying. My own head is the worst person to talk to when I'm Painting. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> oh, that's such a good term. Accountability buddies. Oh, I like that. When we start, when we get to a point where we figure out how to do custom alerts and things like that, we should do an accountability buddies. Or how would you do an emote for that? An emote for that would be good. It is basically co working, but like, fun. <laughs> We're co working, but it's less like homework. Oh, even then I looked at the chair and I'm just like, did this there? And then she wasn't. It was her cushion. Did I teach you that? I don't think. Did I? I don't know. Sounds like a Gridley thing, but it might not be me. It might be one of the other ones. Help with the lats. <gasps> I may. I may. I'm going to noodle ink my first because she's going to help me with bots would be my first thing. But thank you, Coffee Trapper. I will write that down. Same thing if you need help with um, any other tips that I've learned about thumbnails and titles and stuff, message me because I've done a bunch of reading on that. Uh, boop. Alerts, that's it. Alerts. And you're on my Discord now, so that's even easier to poke you. <laughs> yeah, trade. Trade of knowledge. Absolutely fine. Absolutely fine because all these things are just like. If you know someone who knows, it's just so much more accessible and easier to figure out than it is watching a hundred YouTube videos on the topic. Or finding blogs that don't really answer questions. I hate those ones. The blogs that are like, 
click next 400 times to hear more info, but all the info is about talking about how the info exists and not actually telling you the info. <laughs> you need the right person to unlock it in your brain as well? Yes, 100%. 100%. That's how I felt when I um, I read the, I did the audiobook for The Year I Met My Brain, um, which is all about ADHD, but it's written by what's her name, Matilda something, who is a journalist. And instead of being written by an academic or a medical perspective, it's written by a journalist who went and interviewed all these people who have been doing research on ADHD and have, you know, the full story. And because it's through the voice of a journalist who has ADHD, it's so much more accessible to my brain because it's it's like a nattering conversation to listen to this audiobook and it's so much easier to figure out. Um, and she sort of mixed in like biographical stuff with the really academic stuff and it just gives it real world context and it just makes so much more sense, um, which is very good. I very much recommend that one if anyone is interested in ADHD stuff the air I met my brain so yeah I have stopped myself from doing too much reading since I was diagnosed because I have wanted to focus on what my doctor has recommended and my doctor team people and on top of that I'm very impressionable so I don't want to deep dive too much and just take on so much that I get the overwhelm I've been very careful to curate and just think this is something I can slowly learn about over a long period of time rather than hyper focus deep dive burnout don't want to do that would rather paint yeah Now I'm just noodling, creating little forms. These little little forms are so satisfying. They're just like little, little blubbles. And again, this is looking nothing like my reference, but it's just helpful to jump over to the reference visually every now and then and just flick my eye over there and go, oh yeah, little, little cloud doobles. That's what they look like. Context. Good. I've said context too many times today. Word of the day. Pretty. This is looking very candy colours. With the pink and the blue and the light yellow. I could always glaze it a little bit more after this layer is dry, so I think right now I'll, I'll worry a little bit less about colours and just stick with values and forms, but I'm happy with it. It's definitely interesting but not detracting from the harpy, I think. I think. It'll be easy to tell if it's detracting from the harpy once the harpy is coloured. Which I think will be what my next stream will be. Because I'm going to run out of time on this one. Where are we at? So we can go for two hours before I have to go, which is about uh, 15 minutes. And then I'll have to get ready to go get Little Bird from daycare. And then the chaos will come home with me not even maybe we'll do 10 minutes because I've still got to drop past puppy babysitter with dog bed that I forgot because I'm silly dog bed dog door dog bowl I think that was my list yes oh I've got three lists around me at the moment no too many lists dr. Batman's already told me he wants three other things for camping tomorrow <laughs> I know she's going to lose her mind. I know. Well, the other thing is I could do, like, a ding-dong ditch where I leave everything in the visitor car park and then you come out and grab it. Would you prefer to do that? Because if I do that, then she doesn't see me. She just sees the stuff appear. I have written them down. I've got one blue list there and then I've got a white list over there and then I've got the car list, which I'm saying you. I, if you think she'll stay calmer and more chill not seeing me, I'm 100% okay with doing that because I want to preserve the fact that she's happy and chill with you at the moment. 
So I can just put all the things in the visitor car park and then message you and then you just come out and grab it. Um, that's fine with me. Is she just snoozing at the moment? How's she doing? She's settled fine. Yay! Is she laser focused on that window or is she alright? I wonder how she'll go with that, having an accessible window to outside the house traffic. Small balks at noises, but she's had a snooze. Oh, good. As long as she's had a snooze, because yeah, normally 12.30 till like 3 o'clock, she's just full passed out. Because that's when the baby sleeps, so that's when she sleeps. Because she is also baby. It'll be interesting when everyone sort of comes home for the day, if she gets too balky. But if she does, just boot her in the backyard or something and we'll see how she goes back there. My dog door is just like your old dog door, isn't it? You know how to install it and that. Do you need me to come in and install it? Because I can. That'd be the other thing. Oh yeah, true. She is used to being around her toddler, but other people and other dogs. You can do it, sweet. Okay, thank you. I hate how I get to this point of the painting session where I know I have to finish soon and I'm doing the best painting I've done the whole time, in my opinion. I like really like this little section and I'm just like, I just want to keep going. <gasps> uh. It's pretty normal for me. It's always that last hour I work where I do my favorite bits and I'm just like, that's where I want to keep working past 4 a.m. and I'm like, yeah. that weird mix between it takes you so long to get warmed up and just the longer you look at it the better you have enough to worry about missy yeah i probably do probably but when do i not have enough to worry about never i will always find something to worry about i'm that talented <laughs> this has been really fun having you hang out on stream girl you should come hang out more whenever you're available Oh, Desaurus, there you are. Hello. How are you? We were just talking about the, the Twitch change of TOS thing again <laughs> before. Because um, I watched that video and yes, it was chaos. It was absolute chaos. I can't believe that was only three months ago that the TOS change thing happened with artistic nudity. I'm doing well. I've only got a little bit left of stream to go because I have to go pick up Little Miss from daycare, but we've done this entire coloured background today, which feels real good. This is progress. This is still Harpy number one. Harpy number two is in the drafting stage um, because I've decided to make a pair. So yeah, I don't know. If I'm, if I'm in the mood later tonight after baby bedtime, I may jump on stream again to do more or maybe I'll just work privately I'm not sure um, mainly because it, since it's just me I'm more than likely have to ditch stream if anything happens and that always feels a bit I feel a bit guilty when I have to just ditch you guys but you know you all know there's a two-year-old that needs mum sometimes so thank you for your understanding um, but our next official stream, when is that slated for? Let me just quickly check on my scheduling thingy. I want to do more scheduling on the Twitch thing, but it wants me to click every day, like every Friday, every Monday when I do it. And I'm like, I cannot be a consistent streamer that way. I can tell you what days I am booked into stream, but they are different days every week, um, which I know is not the best way to do it, but I only need one more day stream. This was my sixth day and you need seven days so i think if i stream later tonight that doesn't count as a separate day um and then we'll be there which is great the best one you heard of was the comment that every time subscribed to his finger that was very creative that was very creative and that was the interesting thing there was a lot of very creative people going how far can i push this when they've just opened the door to the craziness okay so our next official stream is wednesday next week um day stream 11 till 2 ish so, yay! 
I will see you all then, if not in a random evening between now and then. Because yeah, this weekend we're going camping, so unfortunately no weekend night streams. I know this looks heinously bright here, but part of that is the studio light. If I turn off studio light, that looks a bit more chill. It's just a bit more opaque, this bit I've just done. Because I used the King's Blue, which has titanium in it, and that is opaque, not transparent. But I thought that would be a good little sky break in between the cloud, but it's actually looking more like a cloud. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I've gone from I really enjoy what I'm painting to I'm questioning again. But that is the nature of Cloudscape. You make different decisions all the time, and then you question yourself. But I know walking away from this and going and being toddler mum for a while will be good because it means the second I look back at it, I'll have fresh eyes and then be able to make clearer decisions. Yay. Awesome. This has been a really fun stream. I like daytime streams in terms of good light. It's been lovely to have so many of you be able to join me. I always worry everyone just has to be at work and is not allowed to lurk. <laughs> But Fridays seem to be a fun day, so maybe we'll have to make Fridays a more regular thing. Because she's at daycare on Fridays, Fridays are possibly a more doable time. Which is good. Cool. Late night Seattle for you? Oh, cool. That's not too bad. And yes, fresh eyes is always nice. Your work hours are inconsistent. So am I. So am I. <laughs> the only consistency is when baby is asleep. But even then, half the time, I do have to actually clean the house and do laundry and clean the kitchen and stuff like that sometimes. Because um, that's not fair on Dr. Batman when he already does all the cooking and so many other things. Walking the dog all the time because I've been slack lately. I've been slack because I've been painting. Yay. Awesome. Well, who else is streaming at the moment that we can raidy raid? Let's have a look. Boop. Sometimes you'll be here, sometimes you won't. That's okay. We're always blessed whenever you can make it. That's always good. <gasps> Heart is streaming and so is dodgy paper. Oh, who are we going to do? Who are we going to do? Let's do dodgy paper. Dodgy Paper makes the paper, the handmade paper, that I use in my Oiltober series on YouTube. So if you've seen any of my Oiltober videos, they are the drawing challenge I used to do in Octobers. Um, I don't think I can commit to it this year, but maybe I'll do like a one a week and we'll do like four or something. But let's go have a look. Ooh, he's making paper with someone. Who's he making paper with? I don't know. But it's Creative Fridays, so I reckon we'll do that. So let me jump into the thing. To do that, dodgy underscore paper. And we'll go have a look at what Dodgy Vodger is up to. I'm on the wrong screen again. That one, that one, that one. I deleted the wrong one. Uh, but yes, um, everyone go say hi to Dodgy Roger and just go, I don't know, what do we want to do for a raid thing? We can say, just say more Dodgy Paper for Liz. <laughs> More dodgy paper for Liz, because I have so much, but I still want to do even more all the time. All right, we're going to go. That's going to be on Twitch. The raid will be on Twitch. So YouTube will just go to the stream end page, and then Twitch will automatically pop over. No, not dodgy Roger. Just hang on, Kel, and it'll automatically send you over. Okay? All right. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for coming to stream, and thank you so much for hanging out. This has been really fun. And then, yeah, next Wednesday is my next official stream, but you can keep an eye on the community tab in YouTube and Twitch. I'm going to try and put the schedule in there as much as I can. All right. Bye.